This video is the first part of a four part series about the four fundamental forces of nature. And I'm not talking about earth, air, fire and water. I'm talking about gravity, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force and electromagnetism. These are the forces that tell the matter in our universe how to interact with itself. Each force is associated with a carrier particle, gauge bosons if you will. Our first force is gravity. Gravity seems pretty simple. It makes things fall. This is what Isaac Newton studied a few hundred years ago. He came up with the famous F equals M times H, or force equals mass times acceleration. This formula can be used to calculate the Earth's gravity. If it were to drop a mass 1 kg from a height of 1 meter, it should accelerate to 9.81 meters per second before hitting the ground. This gives us the gravitational strength of the Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared, or 1g. Though it's not Newton who best described gravity within theory. Gravity is most accurately described by the General Theory of Relativity published by Albert Einstein in 1915, which describes gravity not as a force but as a consequence of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. This theory can be visualized with an easy experiment like this. I've put a very interesting video link in the description below in which gravity is visualized. The net in this case represents the space-time continuum. Every ball represents a body of mass which has consequently a curve in the net, toward which other masses are attracted, ironically by gravity. This experiment is just a simplified version of reality, but it will do. In reality, this results in objects falling towards the mass that is the Earth. After the Big Bang, gravity was the first force to separate from the other unificated forces. This is because gravity is the weakest of the four forces. It's about 10 to the 38 times weaker than the strong nuclear force. Due to this weakness, the force becomes less and less influencing on smaller scales. On the human level, gravity wouldn't pull your body towards another humans. On the molecular scale, the influence of gravity has become barely noticeable. In fact, if you go down to the quantum level, general relativity won't suffice as a theory for gravity anymore. This is because general relativity is formulated within the framework of classical physics, while the other forces are formulated from the quantum mechanical viewpoint. A quantum theory of gravity is one of today's most wanted scientific theories. The fact that gravity makes mass attract other mass is a crucial phenomenon to get the universe working, mainly at the cosmological scale, but also at much smaller scales. If we go back to the molecular level, gravity Gravity is just strong enough to pull molecules together. If one were to create a vast field of molecules in an empty space, gravity would eventually, after millions of years, work its magic and pull the particles together in a process called accretion. It's this process that has formed the planets of our solar systems billions of years ago, and before that it contracted interstellar gases and dust to form our sun. Gravity is what keeps the Earth in orbit around the sun. The sun in the center of the solar system the Milky Way from flying apart and it allows Jupiter to catch those nasty comets before they can hit the Earth. And finally, on Earth, if you jump, the mass of the Earth pulls you down back and causes falling. So gravity is clearly a very important law in the universe. But there's more. This law has an enforcer. The gravity boson. Gravity's carrier particle, the so-called graviton, is the only of the four particles left unfound. Five of you include the Higgs boson. The graviton has proven quite elusive over the past decade, and it's quite likely we might never be able to detect it. A famous example considers an ideal detector where the mass of the planet Jupiter placed in close orbit around a neutron star, which is a very strong source of gravitons. A back-of-the-envelope calculation reveals that even in this extremely unrealistic scenario, it would take over a hundred years to detect one single graviton. And even if in the far future someone would spend their valuable time and resources on building this detector, it would not work. Because except gravitons, neutron stars also emit neutrinos. In fact, the neutrino graviton ratio is 10 to the 33rd to 1. So you'd also need to filter out the neutrino static before being able to detect any gravitons. And neutrinos are not filterable. In fact, since this video started, you've been hit with almost 8 quadrillion neutrinos. Which of course you didn't notice because they pass right through you. They pass right through almost everything. In order to build a neutrino filter, one would have to build a wall made of lead, one light year thick, and still more than half of the neutrinos would pass through it. Conclusion, single graviton detection isn't practically possible, but indirect graviton detection is possible. Actually, we have done it already. What we have been able to detect are gravitational waves. This amazing discovery by the LINGO experiment was announced in February 2016. Gravitational waves are made of lots and lots of gravitons, just like electromagnetic waves are made of lots and lots of photons. A typical gravitational wave is composed of one quadrillion gravitons per cubic centimeter. Therefore, it's obviously much easier to detect than one single graviton. 
We definitely do not have the technology to detect individual gravitons and unless some new ingenious way to detect them is found we will never be able to do so even with much more advanced technology. And that's about all I have to tell you about gravity. Next up in this series is the strong nuclear force. In the meantime as always follow me on Twitter and check out the other links in the description for more science. And see you next time.